This behavior of clips in time signature also applies to devices like the Red Drum and the Matrix, which are pattern-based devices. And it makes using those pattern-based devices much simpler. So when I select a device like the Red Drum, for example, and if I had some patterns recorded in A1, B1, maybe B2 or B3, I create a pattern lane. And what it allows me to do in this pattern lane is very quickly draw in a clip. We'll do it bar by bar here. And once I have a clip drawn in, I can select the bank and the pattern number that I want it to play for that particular clip. This makes using pattern devices easier because prior to this, if you wanted a section in the song where a pattern device was not playing, you'd have to create a blank pattern and actually select that blank pattern manually. Now, because clip behavior is when nothing is existing outside of a clip that plays, so anything that, anytime there's a clip that shows, that's when you hear it. When I play back this pattern, you're going to hear these pattern changes, and at this point, no pattern will play back, and you'll be able to mute the pattern. This also is useful for doing things like stutter edits. So if I wanted to take a pattern and maybe stutter it in 16th notes or 32nd notes, instead of making a pattern that has 32nd note or 16th note stutters, I can actually just stutter the clips. So I'm going to take this clip here and take it down to 16th notes, and then just copy and paste it. And in that instance, what it's going to do is trigger that pattern as if it was a stutter edit. So again, making the pattern devices much more logical when you're using it within sequences. And this is one of the benefits to using clips. Scrolling in and out on your sequence, there's a couple of key commands that we've changed. So things like zooming in and out horizontally have been changed as well, so that they're automatically assigned to G and H on your QWERTY keyboard. You can also zoom in and out uh, vertically as well, and those are uh, certain key commands depending on whether you're a Mac or PC. And there is a key command sheet that comes with Reason version 4, so you can see what the key commands are. And one of the other things we changed as well is these tools at the top, the upper left-hand side, your arrow tool, your pencil tool, your erase tool, the new razor tool, and so on, can all be selected very quickly on your computer keyboard by just using the QWERTY keys, which is exactly Q, W, E, R, T, and Y. And in that way, it improves the workflow and speeds up the process of doing things like taking a clip and maybe moving it with the hand tool or moving around in the sequence. Or if I wanted to take this clip and maybe split it up, I could use my new razor tool to split the clip. If I wanted to as well with this new razor tool, take the entire sequence and split an entire section of the song. If I click and drag in the timeline at the top, now the entire song, every clip contained within, gets split up at that range. So those are some of the new features in Reason version 4 Sequencer. Um, we've shown you how the new track per device allows you to really streamline your workflow and allow you to do all of your uh, control editing, note editing, and arrangement right in the one window. Um, having your things like your inspector, um, your new razor tool, and your new clip function, which allows you to move things around and really edit your data and get the most workflow for the least amount of work. And actually having the key commands assigned to the computer keyboard get your workflow a lot faster as well.